Coming up, keeping her owner safe and out of the ER. This red kelpie herds sheep in the city. And if it's arson, this detective will confirm it. Louisville, Texas. A Dallas suburb is the home of Tara Miller and her chemical detection dog, Beauty a seven-year-old greyhound pit bull cross who is Tara's lifeline. Tara suffers from severe chemical intolerance. Just one whiff of cigarette smoke, perfume, or household cleaner can cause her lungs to fail. Before she got beauty, Tara was rushed to emergency regularly. When I have an attack, usually um, it starts with a chest pain and then it escalates from there where I can't get any air. It's very painful, it hurts a lot. Greg Wilcox, a paramedic, has often come to Tara's rescue. If she doesn't get a shot of epinephrine and it's severe enough a reaction, she will go unconscious and then eventually die. Beauty detects fumes and chemicals before Tara can smell them. Without Beauty, Tara couldn't risk going to the supermarket. Smelling this cleaning product would make her sick. Beauty is trained to keep Tara away from any substance that could trigger an attack. She'll either stop me or she'll guide me around it by pushing her head into my leg or stopping in front of me whenever she smells something that she thinks is bad for me or toxic. It's okay. All right. Let's Tara's let's condition began when she was in grade nine. All right. When asbestos was removed from the walls of her high school, Tara had a violent allergic reaction. Afterwards, she developed severe reactions to all kinds of substances. With the frequent attacks, Tara stopped going to school and studied at home. She adopted Beauty to keep her company. Beauty had been abused and was timid and nervous. She was really quite a sweet dog. I took her out for a walk and we kind of clicked. She was kind of afraid of everybody. She was afraid of noises and pretty much everything. Tara worked gently with Beauty to rebuild her trust in people. Beauty is mostly pit bull. American pit bull terriers are powerful and athletic with a short, glossy coat. They are excellent working dogs. They will do anything for their person. I mean, they will give you their life for you if they have to. Beauty is also part greyhound. This gives her a sleeker body than the average pit bull and a lot more speed. Soon after adopting Beauty, Tara was diagnosed with chemical intolerance. She decided to train Beauty to alert to the substances that caused her attacks. Tara began by teaching Beauty to keep her away from cinnamon, a strong-smelling substance she isn't allergic to. She used clicker training, which rewards desired behavior with a click now, and a treat. Let's go. That's it. There you go. Yes, Friends helped Tara train Beauty to detect toxic odors like pesticides, bleach, and cigarette smoke. Tara also trained Beauty to use a specially designed phone. Beauty. The button connects to 911, where when Tara's name and address show up, they send help immediately. Beauty has given Tara back her freedom and the confidence to enroll in a court reporting course. I have the option now to go to college to do things that I normally would not have been able to do, have a career, have a steady job where I'm not always out because I'm ill. Just 
basic things that everybody else takes for granted. Beauty, hey, good girl. But Beauty might not be going along to school. A few months ago, she was traumatized by a paramedic. We pulled into the hospital, they opened the door, reached in, grabbed Beauty, and threw her off the stretcher and out of the ambulance onto the concrete. They basically destroyed my dog. They made her terrified of people she had come to trust to take care of her mom. Beauty just hasn't been the same since. She'll do her job if she has to, for me. But she's nervous. She's not enjoying work anymore. She's not happy. Tara wants to let Beauty retire, but can't, until another dog can take over. Two months ago, she adopted Cody, an Australian Shepherd. Good job! Beauty helped train him. She pushes him away from substances Tara's allergic to. Oh boy. Tara starts school tomorrow and wants to take Cody. Come on, guys. Come on, Cody. He's passed the tests in the park, but before Tara can trust him with her life, she'll test him in a department store with her father's help. Tara and Beauty go in first to pinpoint the danger zones. At school, Cody will have to keep Tara away from students wearing strong perfume. Beauty indicates a spot where Cody should alert. Now it's Cody's turn. Where are they? Where? It's very nerve-wracking trying to work a new dog that you have to entrust your life to. If Cody doesn't alert at the perfume department, he won't pass and Beauty's retirement will be postponed. Cody alerts to the perfume. Good, good, good boy. He passed the test. Beauty congratulates her protege. He did a lot better than I thought he would do. He alerted as soon as we got there. He was just really happy about it. I'm actually a lot more confident than I was when we came in here today. So hopefully he won't get me killed tomorrow. It's Tara's first day at school. She's nervous, but she tries not to let Cody know. Can we go? Cody keeps Tara away from people wearing perfume and from other chemical odors she could react to. When the coast is clear, Cody lets her move. When I left this morning, I was scared to death, but he has not let me down at all. And there's been people here with perfume, and I haven't smelled any of it. But they've told me when he moved me back that, oh, well, it's because I've got strong perfume on. So you can't ask for more than that, can you? It'll be a while before Tara can trust Cody the way she trusts Beauty. Beauty has taught Cody well. Now she can retire, but she'll always be Tara's favorite pet. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. Dogs with Jobs has visited sheep herding dogs at work in the Spanish Pyrenees, on the Hungarian Plains, in the English Cotswolds, and now in Tallahassee, Florida. Cinder, a seven-year-old Kelpie, is an urban herder and an environmentalist. She helps her owner, Megan Thacker, move several flocks of sheep around the city of Tallahassee. Cinder is the main herding dog and makes the rounds with Megan. Cinder and her flocks of sheep are part of a green solution to a creeping problem. The killer weed kudzu has invaded hundreds of acres of land, choking off trees and vegetation. During warm weather, it can grow up to a foot a day and is almost impossible to destroy. Fortunately, kudzu has a four-legged enemy. 
While these sheep attack the kudzu, Cinder keeps the flock in line and out of traffic. The sheep graze in different locations around Tallahassee from one to three days. An electric fence is put up to contain them. Megan and Cinder spend 24 hours a day together, rounding up sheep, delivering them to various sites, putting up and checking the fences. Cinder's job is to be with me all day and just be there to do whatever it is that we need done during the day. If the sheep get out, she has to round them up. If I need them loaded into the truck, she's there to help me. Cinder's job is full of challenges, unbearable heat, poisonous snakes, and traffic. A lot of the locations are near busy roads. Cinder has to make sure the sheep don't wander onto the streets. I worry all the time about the traffic. A lot of people in cars don't slow down when there's sheep and dogs out. Tallahassee's tropical climate is home to all kinds of poisonous snakes. They hide in the long grass, and Cinder could accidentally step on one. She's so small, a bite from an angry snake could kill her. Henry of Bellwether Solutions came up with the idea of using sheep to combat the kudzu. Sheep are, if you want to think about it, uh, an inch-wide mowing machine that's self-propelled, that seeks out the kudzu wherever it happens to be, and will actually tear it down out of the trees. Fortunately for us, kudzu is an excellent feed for sheep. And for them, it's as if they were at a birthday party eating ice cream and cake nine months of the year. So they go after kudzu with great gusto. The reason cinder is so important to this process is these areas are incredibly dense and thick. Cinder can go in and gather the sheep in whatever way the shepherd needs. This field on the edge of the Piney Z subdivision was once chest high in kudzu. The sheep last grazed here a month and a half ago. By the time Megan and Cinder return at sundown, this patch of kudzu will be history. Regular grazing will eventually kill the kudzu after about three years. Megan and Cinder pick up more sheep. They're in charge of 1,400 sheep, which are spread around the city in small flocks. Cinder rounds up the sheep following Megan's voice commands. Good girl, push, push. Steady now. Steady. Push, push. Kelpies herd by using the eye, intimidating the sheep with their gaze. It makes the sheep think they're being hunted. If a sheep turns around and stares her down, she will just stare and stare until she can back it up. There's a certain amount of fear between the sheep and the dog. They're just afraid enough to behave and do what the dog tells them. In the summer, temperatures here hover around 98 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 Celsius. Heat exhaustion is a constant threat. But Kelpies were originally bred to work in the extreme Australian climate and have a high heat tolerance. I chose a Kelpie because I felt that of all the herding dogs, it matches my personality better than any of the other breeds. She never quits on me when I have to do a job, even if it's hard and we're both hot and tired, she keeps going and continues to try until the job's finished. Contrary to popular belief, Kelpies are not part dingo but are descended from short-coated, prick-eared collies. Cinder was easy to train and responds immediately to any signal from Megan, even from a great distance. Ah, uh ah, -uh, come by. In here! Cinder and I make a really good team and did right from the very beginning. She thinks about what I'm thinking before I even think about it lots of times. She's very intuitive. If I don't give any commands, she's out there and she brings the sheep to me. There's an emergency. 
A fence is down and the sheep have escaped. Megan and Cinder rush over to control the situation. One of Cinder's jobs is to gather the sheep up if they ever get out, which happens occasionally. I need the dog to round them up quickly so that they're out of the traffic and people's yards. And the dog did overall an outstanding job in getting the situation under control. Rounding up the sheep and getting them back into the pen and getting the fence back up. It's the end of the day. Cinder and Megan go back to the Piney Z site to see what kind of dent the sheep have made in the kudzu. Earlier today, the kudzu overgrowth at Piney Z looked like this. In just 12 hours, the four-legged lawnmowers have eaten up the patch of kudzu and trampled the stems down to the ground. Cinder and her herd will return in a few months to eat any fresh growth. Eventually, thanks to Cinder and the sheep, this area will be kudzu-free. Cinder and I's relationship, it's um, much more than just a pet. It's much more than a working partnership. We're together 24 hours a day, and we trust each other. I couldn't do my job without her. And uh, I guess she likes me OK. <laughs> Approximately 25% of fires in the United States are caused by arson. In Chicago, Arson is the leading cause of fire fatalities. Blaze, a lively 18-month-old Labrador pup, lives in a suburb of Chicago with Scott Tebow and his family. Scott is a firefighter and paramedic who's hoping to become an arson investigator. His career change hinges on Blaze. If she passes her test, she'll be his partner. The certification test is kind of scary, because I mean, if, if I don't certify, we, I have to go back to school again, and that's not what I'm looking forward to. Substances that start fires are called accelerants. Arson dogs like Blaze help pinpoint them and eliminate the need to gather numerous samples. Tomorrow is their certification test. Check. Blaze has a good nose, but she needs to stay focused to pass the exam. Scott takes Blaze to work every day. She loves playing with the firefighters when they're waiting for calls. Scott and Blaze need to be certified as a team and handler unit. But Blaze may still be too puppyish to be a working dog. She gets very upset when I'm not around. She always wants to be by me. She always wants to play. So the re she gets very upset when we go in the ambulance. It's because I'm not in the firehouse and I'm not with her all the time. And she gets upset with that quite often. Blaze is a young dog with a lot of energy. To pass tomorrow's test, she'll have to pay close attention to Scott. Working with Blaze is, a, is very, very tough at times. Um, Blaze likes to do what Blaze wants to do. The dog has to work with the handler and he cannot be distracted with any other things. Trainer Bob Fleming is conducting Blaze's four-part test. Okay, Scott, we're gonna do the can line up here. And what we've got is 20 cans. First, Blaze needs to search 20 paint cans filled with fire debris. Bob has planted a drop of turpentine in one of the cans. Blaze needs to pick the right can and alert by sitting. So when your dog indicates, you have to make the call. You understand? Yes, very good. Okay, let's do it. Ready to go to work? Come on. Okay, okay, buddy. Check. Good check. Check. Good girl. Check here. Labrador Retrievers, as an arson dog, are probably one of our better candidates. Uh, we like them because of their attention span, the high retrieval drive, and uh, their hunt drive. People like them because they're a non-threatening breed. So uh, coming into a, a fire situation with and working around the general public and a lot of the PR things, the Labrador is probably the best choice. Good girl, that's our fight right there. For Blaze, the search is a game, and the reward is a tennis ball. Blaze worked with good intensity the entire time, checking each individual can. When she came to the can that contained the accelerant, very clear, concise uh, indication. Blaze passed part one of the test. 
Some arsonists start fires in piles of laundry, hoping investigators will think the clothes accidentally caught fire on the water heater. If the clothes don't all burn, traces of accelerant will reveal the truth. Come on, man. The clothes are full of distracting odors, human, animal, and food smells. Check. Check here. Check here. Blaze finds the accelerant and gets a reward for passing the second part of the test. Check. Good girl. Her next task is to search an entire field for a tiny piece of gauze with kerosene on it. When leaving the crime scene, arsonists may drop evidence that provides clues to their path. Check. Good check. Check. Good check. Check. The pair use the wind to their advantage, and Blaze finds the evidence. It's a good girl. There's our fine right there. Good She's check. aced part three good of the girl. test. Blaze's final hurdle is to search a fire scene. Broken glass and jagged debris could harm Blaze, so Scott goes in alone to make sure the area is safe. We're getting ready now to put down another accelerant for Blaze here in this structure. Uh, this was not an arson fire itself here, so we already know the building's uh, free of any accelerants. So what I'm gonna be putting down here is Jet A fuel, and I'll put a couple drops here on this chair. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. The overriding smell here is of smoke and chemicals from the burned furnishings. Blaze has to focus. Come on. Good girl. Check. Check here. Check. Check here. Good girl. There's our fine right there. Blaze had an excellent girl. search again. Good a little girl. different here. There's a lot of unsure footing and uh, things for her to stumble over and kind of spook her at times, but she worked through it real nicely, came to the odor. She indicated the odor as she's supposed to, and Scott made the call again. Excellent job. Okay, Scott, uh, you've passed the fire scene test as well. That means all four tests have been completed successfully without any misses. I'm happy to tell you that both Blaze and you are now certified as an detector dog team. Congratulations. Thank you. Scott and Blaze have a busy 10 years ahead of them. She's going to do a great job. I look forward to working with her quite a bit. She's a very good dog. I love her very much. And I think we're going to make a great team together.